Young is going to come out. Fieldstead is going to come in at second base. And Nash will come over onto the mound to pitch. So actually, no batting lineup changes for them. That's just a move with the uh, player who's already not hit it. Yeah, and that's one of their better arms by 11 and a third innings pitch, 17 Ks in those 11 innings, and a 2.47 ERA. That's best on the team for the city, Cedar City Reds. It's a 1 0 count to Burdett with the runner on first. Late kick, delivery is going to be elevated to the right side foul, but this has a chance to get caught. Long run from the first baseman, not able to come up with it. 1 1 the count. Wasatch leading 2 0 here in the third inning of this one tie. Courtesy this inning of a Blake Sweat home run. I was trying to go back in. Remember Mark McGuire when he broke the record in the home run? There was just a line yeah, drive, line right? Drive Didn't kind of know if it was going to go out or not. Kind of anticlimactic. Nice piece of hitting there from Ferdet. He's going to get a base knock through the 3-4 hole. Dahl's going to stay at second base. But a nice piece of hitting there from Burdett and Wasatch, after getting two outs, now has two base runners on, and that's going to bring up Riker Evans, who walked in his first at bat. Those, those kind of <clears throat> hits used to drive me crazy. Hits the pitching coach, Tyler, because you have your second baseman over in double play depth. But if you look at him right now, he's too deep and he's too far over. But you've got a guy, guy coming in who has some good velocity. So I'd maybe have him take a step over and cover that ball, but he's just out of position. And that ball easily got through, which is a tailor-made ground ball, hard-hit ground ball if you've got a guy over in that position where it was at. Ball one here to Evans. Evans had an RBI single in game one, ended up one for two in that game, came into this game hitting three for eight on the year, walking his first at bat. Then got thrown out going home on a pass ball. This one's going to be swung on, and that's over the second baseman's head. A couple of base knocks here for Wasatch with two outs, and they push another run across as Mike Adal will score from second base. Riker Evans continues to hit well with runners in scoring position. He is now three for four in those opportunities. Wasatch has runners on the corners with two runs across. That's I, I feel like he has just been Mr. Clutch this year. Runners in scoring position. You look up and down that lineup who you are, he's going to be at the very top of your list right now. He's going to bring up the freshman Braxton. Faller had a great at bat in his first at bat. Ended up earning the walk after falling behind in the count. Ooh, tough strike one call here to Faller. That was a little bit below the knees. It's really been a good day for Braxton Tyler. Had a finish hit single in the first game as well. So found his way on with both of his at-bats that he's had. And as a freshman, you know, nothing's nothing's given. It's all got to be earned out there. And you get a lot of eyes that go on you from the other players, the fans, the parents, us as broadcasters, right? What can the freshman do? And he's lived up to it so far. Tries to go the opposite way with it. Goes off the end of the bat. First baseman will fill it touch the bag. Nice play there from the first baseman, and Wasatch is retired. But two runs come across on three hits, no wares. Two are left on base. 3-0 as we go into the bottom of the third. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Melissa here again with ARC. Have you heard we are a locally owned and operated company? We have created new affordable housing solutions for the Valley as well as creating amazing custom spaces out of repurposed shipping containers. We build mobile offices, commercial spaces, pools, spas. The possibilities are endless when you choose ARC. Get $1,000 off any office purchase until the end of February. We are located at 375 West, 910 South in Hayward. Check out our website at spacesbyark.com. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. 
And now, back to the action. Wasatch High School Sports on 94.5 The Peak. Bottom of the third inning brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Wasatch leading 3-0, heading into the bottom of the third inning against Cedar High School. Wasatch is able to push a run across in the second, thanks to four walks and a wild pitch, but there in the third inning, a solo shot from Blake Sweat, from then a two-out RBI from Evans gives Wasatch the 3-0 lead as we go again into the bottom of the third. Blake Sweat's been good. Three Ks through two innings. Starts with ball one. He's going to face 8-9-1. Junior Burgess, who comes in one for five. Leader, a senior, batting in the ninth spot, and then back to the top of the order to Giles. Swing and a miss. Fastball moves down to 1-1. Burgess well behind that fastball up his cadence in order to catch up the bad thing. 1-1 one, one to count. Back into the windup, the pitch. Long on, does speed it up a little bit. Gets a piece, fouls it off to the Wasatch dugout. 1-2 to count. He does speed that up, but I'm not sure he sped it up enough to go away from the fastball. Tyler, I think something harden away or harden in would be okay here. 1-2 to count. Takes a while to set up the signs. Delivers and gets him with the off speed. Strike three, that is strikeout number four. And Wasatch has one away here in the bottom of third. Yeah, tight with the slider. Yeah, I think so. That's a good looking pitch from Blake. And just unfair to put that on a hitter to see the two hard fastballs. That's that's such a good put out pitch because when that leaves the hand, it's going to appear to the eye that it's a fastball coming out. That slider usually has a little bit tighter spiral, and it takes a really good eye to recognize that out of the hand. So the hitter's going to see it and think fastball, and then it just breaks right underneath the bat. Number nine hitter up for Cedar City. He's had a good year, Ty. 360 with four RBIs. You mentioned earlier, Ty, that you kind of that number nine spot, you, you like a maybe an underclassman who's got a lot of potential, or you, you, like, you like a guy down number nine who can just disrupt things, and right now leaders squared a couple of times trying to get a drag bun base hit here. It's going to be a couple of balls, so 2-0 the count. He did foul that off. Did he foul that off? Yeah. He did. Sorry, 1-1 one, one the count. I, I, I wasn't sure if the umpire saw it, to be honest. The umpire was kind of doing a little limbo action to get out of the way, but he just up 1-1. One, one. Gets a nice pitch in there for strike two. 1-2, one, two, now the count. Sweat so working out of the windup. Pitch. Delivers the 1 2, goes upstairs, doesn't get the leader to chase, so 2 2 now to count. So to bring that down maybe what? Five inches and you get a strike out there. And it's just tough when you have that high velocity fastball and then that slide that you throw right before that. It's a good little pitch combination there for Sweat. The 2 2 goes back to it and gets the strikeout. Backwards K and number K for strikeout number five now for Blake Sweat. He's humming on the mound, two away. No doubt about that one, Tyler. That, that one is right there. The batter can turn and start walking back to the dugout. And that thing's about halfway there. Pretty pitch. Not sure what he's looking at. Going to bring up Giles, who popped out at the first baseman in his first at bat. Again, came into this game 270 with a couple of doubles. Hitting on the right hand side. Blake into the windup. Delivers. Goes back to the off speed. Misses inside the ball one. Eye on how Blake wants to manage this second time through the lineup here. Starting Giles off the drop speed, trying to give him a different boy that's going heavy fast while the first time he takes it. This is low, so that moves the count to 2 0. That's how your philosophy was challenge with the fastball until they're on time yeah. with the fastball, right? Just don't mess around too much. Maybe hitter by hitter, you're going to throw a couple, but. When you break down the analytics, Tyler, even in the majors, those guys get if you throw. So many, ooh, Ty, would like to have that call. I thought that was pretty close. They're going to have ball three there. But those guys can throw any pitch at any time, right? And even then, about 75% of the time, the big are throwing fastball. And, and I think sometimes four straight balls, a couple of those look pretty good, Ty. But even then, I, I think sometimes you overthink it in lower-level baseball, right? High school, middle school, whatever it might be, that level. 
start doing, and, and you do want to develop, and I know you're working on developing those things as well, but, yeah, child sports and basketball, it's a hard sport. Roll it until they show you they are on time with it consistently, because I just think you're going to get more outs than not. Got a pinch hit. Oh, no, sorry, sorry. Boyer is going to come up to the box. He struck out his first at bat. Came in hitting over 300 and had seven RBIs. Leads the team in that category. Also has a double. Cedar City trying to produce here with two outs. Provo was able to have success with that last week against Sweat. It's a good lead from Giles, who has good lead at first base. The strange thing about that walk that just happened, Tyler, it, the zone from the umpire has been fairly generous today. And and there were a couple of that were right around the zone, and it just looked like he decided to tighten it up for whatever reason on that, on that hitter. And we're on a little bit of an off angle, so you can't tell for sure. Maybe he's missing by more than, than we can see on our angle, but just a random inconsistent moment there from the umpire as far as how it's going. Pavin sets up on the insides. Runner goes. This one's elevated to left field. It's going to go foul out of play. A little hit and run action. And Sweat now has the 0-2 lead, 0-2 count lead on Boyer. Sweat's only had to work out of the windup twice. He was able to get out of the last inning after giving up the double with just three pitches. Now working out of the stretch here and already has the 0-2 count. Already has two strikeouts in the inning. Sweat, set, steps off the back of the mound and will reset. That hit and run can be useful on a field like this, either with, with two outs. If you think a ball in the gap, a double should score, and it should, but it's a little bit of a shorter porch down the line, and so it's not automatic, right? And, and so even though you're getting a good jump with two outs, Starting him early on a run and hit can help you out. They're going to strike him out, and so the runner goes, but they get him on the strikeout, and Wasatch retires the inning. No runs on no hits, no wears, nobody left on base. Three Wasatch physical therapy strikeouts, and Wasatch has a 3-0 lead going into the fourth. Chad here from Mountain West Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. Are you ready for lunch? Well, the Dairy King, home of the train, is serving the best foods with friends and family in the Valley and have been the winner of Best of State for 19 years. They've recently been named the official Best of Utah for their milkshakes. You've got to try their delicious train burger with an Oreo shake. They also have those yummy salads that just hit the spot, or you can try a turkey breast sandwich that tickles the taste buds. They've proudly been serving the Heber Valley for 75 years. That's the Dairy King, home of the train, serving deliciousness daily. Stop in today. Four, three, two, KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Top of the fourth inning at Desert Hills High School, or Wasatch Baseball leads Cedar High School 3-0. to zero. Heading here into the top of the fourth inning. This fourth inning action brought to you by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in Heber Valley. They've got personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or GravityCoalition.com. This is a cool shop. Up for Wasatch will be Crew Baxter, and then up to the top of the order to Carter Bucod and Blake Sweat. Baxter, in his first at bat of his high school career, earned the walk, hitting on the left-hand side, and then Carter Bucod will be up next. Wasatch leading 3-0, trying to bounce back from another loss. Again, that's been the story. Wasatch loss, win, loss, win, loss. Let's see if they can get the win here. Game two, the doubleheader. We'll have a doubleheader for you again tomorrow. Those games will be at 9 and 1. So not back-to-back. -back. We've been fortunate. We've had just back-to-back -back games both weekends. Next weekend they'll play at 9, take a break, and then come back and play game three. Quick update on your March Madness tie. Northwestern leading FAU 54-50. Kind of surprising there. Yeah, Northwest is a little bit beat up. FAU kind FAU of had some was success, at one right? Point ranked 11 yeah. in the nation this year. I mean, they've been a, a pretty good program. Baylor taking care of Colgate. And uh, that's going to break my uh, three. My uh, I have a three-year-old tie who filled out a bracket, and uh, he really thought it was funny that Colgate toothpaste, right, was was he one of them. The tooth so he, he went with toothpaste for quite a while there. So <laughs> San Diego State lo leading UAB 16-13, and then early on Western Kentucky leading Marquette five to two. But that's just we're getting started. Three, two, one to count after a swing and a miss from Baxter. 
What do you like in the Aggies tonight? Utah State? I like them. I like them. But if there's one thing we know about Utah universities, it's that they don't win games in the the NCAA tournament. University of Utah, will they'll, they'll be, and they have been, quite terrible at basketball for a while. But then they'll have a year where they sneak in there yeah. and get to the Sweet 16. Yeah. So it's it's true for BYU and Utah State. They, they don't win in the tournament very often. Another walk here as Baxter's reached base both times in both of his at-bats. Yeah, Ty, and, and it seems like, isn't Utah State like the analysis darling every year? Like, oh, I love Utah State, you know, they're got a mature team, good point guard, you know, they got good play, you know, they're disciplined, and so everybody thinks they need to pick you guys in, well, and, and I, always, I always think it's hard. Our Carter's going to try to lay down the drag, not able to do it. Baxter will have to go back to first base, Utah one strike. State, the, the fans don't like to say this, but it's a stepping stone coaching job, and so usually when your team's in the tournament, your coach has been able to make the better yeah. jobs, right. and, and it's always a little bit of a distraction, and I think that could be the case tonight. It sounds to me like Sprinkle may be on his way to Washington. It's the rumor there, and so who knows how that'll play into this whole scenario. Ducard goes with the off-speed pitch. He'll foul it off down the right side. 0-2 to count to the leadoff hitter for Wasak. Had a nice single last game that almost reached the right center field gap. Three hits on the year. Takeoff move. Baxter a little bit late getting back to the bag, but not in time. Baxter stays safe. Carter back in the box, trailing 0-2 in the count. The pitch. High fastball, but Bukad's able to get a piece of it. That's where the catcher wanted it. Carter did a good job of fouling it off. And Nash will reset, still up 0-2. Top of the fourth, these are time limit games. Wasatch only got through five innings in game one against UAP. A little bit more offensive action in that one. And that might be the Wasatch's benefit, to be honest. Like they were down 9-2, and at that point, you're going to have to start burning through pitching that you don't want to go through in a game that was likely out of reach. But so that time limit, limit actually will favor Wasatch. 0-2, Carter elevates this one to left field. Should it be a and catch for the left fielder? Does make the grab, and Wasatch has one away here in the top of the fourth throw in from the left. The catch was easy. The throw was a little bit of an adventure. Got by the shortstop, bounced off the second baseman, but not enough to advance through the second base. So still a runner on first, and that's going to bring up Blake Sweat. He's two for two in the game today, Ty. Had a single through the three, four hole, and then a solo line drive home run over the left field fence in his last at bat. Also pitching on the mound and pitching the jam so far for Wasak. Oh, yeah, he had about six strikeouts, two two innings on the mound. Oh, he's got fooled on that. A first pitch is going to be ground ball to first baseman. First baseman throws it to second. Second baseman can't hold on to it. So the fielder's choice error is going to put Wasatch with two runners on, first and second with one away. Well, everything's coming up roses here for Blake and this one, Tyler. <laughs> on base three times, six strikeouts. All right. his, he's over 14 strikeouts per game average. Right? 14 strikeouts for seven minutes right now. He's, he's over that. He's actually more in the, uh, the 15 strikeouts in range if you combine his last two games. Really, really nice job from Blake so far. He's pitched six and one third innings on the year and already has 14 strikeouts. Off speed pitch that lands in the left side dugout is called a strike. The dugout would be that. impressive. Uh, left, left batter's box, but. Not quite. Did I say the left, the, 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 uh, left side batter? Sorry about that. Really Sorry. <laughs> 01, fastball gets by Grant. So 02, now the count. Wasatch threatening again. Two guys on, one away here in the top of the fourth. Only Texan takes some steps out towards Jacobson. And now he'll get back in the box trying to reset down 02. Nash comes set, takes the peak of second, delivers. It's going to be a ground ball to the 5-6 hole. Third baseman can't handle it. That ball's on the ground. Another error. And Wasatch has the bases loaded. A little bit of coaching action here from Ty. I, I at least <laughs> was silent doing it, wasn't I? But I was up there waving. I grew grew giving him some round, up. He round got tagged, right. and he was getting ready to drop back to the dugout and didn't know the ball was on the ground. So I was, yeah, pointing. to get back <laughs> on the bag over there. And Coach Jacobson was also all over that. He's yeah, going to bring up Bridger Shaw. Bridger Shaw, tough, tough. Days so far in the plate, a couple of strikeouts, trying to break out of the slump start off this season. He's got the bases loaded, an opportunity for an RBI here. 
Mass is going to go back to working out of the windup. Gets the pitch. Play kick. Deliver. Off speed high for ball one. One of the good stories from former coach who has been going back to that pitch that I said landed in the left side dugout. It was left side batter's box, but they were pitching in or they were playing in the state tournament game when he was up in Park City, and they kept calling a high outside fastball a strike. And he had a kid on the mound that I, I believe ended up going to BYU, but they just kept calling this pitch that really wasn't that close, and the umpires kept calling it, and so they just kept hitting the same spot over and over again, and the umpire was consistent and ended up getting the victory. Just unfair. That's Brady, I believe you're talking about. Yeah. Tyler. He was an excellent pitcher. 2-0, ground ball to the shortstop. Shortstop to the first baseman, not in time, so they get the runner at second base. One run will come in, and Wasatch takes the 4-0 lead. That's a good hustle down the line from Bridger, Tyler. That ball dangerously close to a double play. But Scott recognizing you get down the line, protects the run, and by beating that one out, gets Wasatch a 4-0 he just kicked it around a little bit on the defensive side of things. A couple of errors is what led to that run. It's going to be a Mike Adal who hasn't seen many strikes. He has a hit by pitch. He has two hit by pitches and two walks in his four at bats through the two games today. Runners on the corners with two away. Wasa is trying to add to that 4-0 lead. He'll check swing strike there. Four strike one. For that in the on deck circle. Bridge shot first. And Tyron Stocking. Courtesy running for Blake Sweat at third base. Pickoff move to first, not in time. Oh, one to count, two away. Now comes set. Couple of looks. Delivers with the late kick. Foul ball, strike two. Seen some strikes here. Haven't seen many strikes today, but seen some strikes. Now falls behind 0 2. Response here from Wasatch in this game, Tyler. Again, they lost in the opener 9-2. The bounce back now leading 4-0 into the fourth in this one. I feel like it's a pretty resilient team. Swing and a miss. Four strike three, and that will be out number three. Wasatch scores one run on no hits. Two errors in the inning for Cedar City, and two were left on base. Wasatch leads 4-0 going into the bottom of the fourth. You might be used to having someone ask you the question, what is it that you need? I think that's limiting. I'm going to take you through a six-step process, and it's simply answering questions. And it might not just be home. It might be that you want that fancy new car. It might be that you want trips. It's your list. What is it that you really, really want? Call Tom Stone at Guild Mortgage in Heber City. Tom Stone, MLS 257849. Guild Mortgage Company is an equal housing lender. MLS 3274. All loans are subject to underwriter approval. Terms and conditions may apply. Subject to change without notice. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Our locally owned Ace stores are committed to helping our neighbors and our communities. And because we're in the neighborhood, we can deliver almost anything you need. So shop in store or online for whatever your home or yard needs. Choose from top brands like Milwaukee, Steel, Trader, and Benjamin Moore. Then pick up in-store, curbside, or we'll deliver your order right to your home. Around the block, what you need in stock with people who know how to help. See acehardware.com for details. Hi, this is Nicole with Mountain Refined Furnishings and Flooring. And if you didn't know, we've recently partnered with Mattress Warehouse of Utah to bring you the largest selection of mattresses around. The team at Mountain Refined prides themselves on making your home a place where you love to be. We offer a large selection of furnishings, flooring, window treatments, gifts, decor, and so much more. If you haven't been by lately, stop and check it out. You'll be pleasantly surprised. We're located at 480 North Main Street. Five, four, two, two, KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Bottom of the fourth, brought to you by Heber Appliance. When you're down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch the mall at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance furniture and mattress. For Cedar City, it's going to be Nash, who's on the mound right now in relief. Number three hitter, followed by Bunnell and Macker. Blake Sweat still on the mound, and he's humming six strikeouts on the game for Blake Sweat. Only one a walk. Gave up one hit. He'll start, he'll start the inning with a called strike one. And a little bit off speed pitch there. Second time through the lineup here for Blake. 4-0. Wasatch with the lead. Goes with a fastball. It's a rollover ground ball to the shortstop. Bridger Shaw fills the clean. Throws it across the diamond in time. And Wasatch has one away. 
Good play there from Bridger. And Blake Sweat continues to look good on the mound on the 6-3 putout. It'll bring up Bunnell. Bunnell in his first at bat had a backwards, or excuse me, struck out look swinging, but comes into today's game hitting 368 with six RBIs. Steps in on the right hand's batter's box. Blake into the windup. The pitch goes with the off speed. That one slipped, didn't pull the string, and that's ball one. This is the second game of a doubleheader. Wasatch played at 8.30 this morning. Dropped that one 9-2 to two, to a very good 3A Juab team and have bounced back nicely. It's nice to bounce back with Blake Sweat on the mound and they currently lead 4-0 trying to get their third win of the season. Swing and a miss for strike one. 1-1 one, one the count with one away. Blake Sweat back into the lineup. The high leg kick delivers. And that one I think crossed up somebody. Hafen not able to handle that one and that's going to be ball two. Didn't look like that bad of a pitch. Kind of an interesting sequence there. Infield again today for Wasatch. Riker Evans at first. Second baseman is your senior, Carter Bucod. Shortstop, Bridger Shaw, and Braxton Faller at third base. Nice play just recently from Bridger Shaw at short. The 2-1, that one's in there for another strike. Moves the count to 2-2. Two, two. Blake Sweat now. Working on 40 pitches as we are in through now a three and a third inning. Late kick, the 2-2. Struck him out looking. That is strikeout number seven. And that is strikeout looking number four. Blake Sweat continuing to mow on the mound. Seven strikeouts now for the junior. That will bring up Maker. Maker, the best hitter on the team so far this season for Cedar City. 467 batting average, three RBIs, a double, actually two doubles now as he doubled in his first at bat. That's the lone hit that Wasatch has, or excuse me, that Cedar City has in the game today. Right up on the box on the inside part of the right side of the plate. Into the windup, the pitch. That one's in the dirt for ball one. Bottom of the fourth, Wasatch leading 4-0 on the Heber Appliance scoreboard. Blake taking a little bit of time. Steps off the back of the mound. And a recentering a little bit. Wasatch wearing their white bottom black top uniforms today. Cedar City and they're all white. The 1-0. That one misses as well. 2-0 now to count. Blake went through four and a third last game. But was at half the pitch. Was at, excuse me, double the pitches that he was, that he is today. Far more efficient in the game today against Cedar City. The 2-0 make it 3-0 as he misses that one low and away as well. Taking a little bit more time. You got the first two outs, got a ground out at the shortstop, and then a strikeout looking. So he was efficient through those first two batters. Now taking a little bit of time here, and now falls behind 3-0, and he'll walk Makert on four straight pitches. Only the second walk of the game here for Sweat. And that'll bring up... Let's see, a pinch hitter, I believe. Number 19 is coming up to the plate. Oh, excuse me, number 19 is Corey. Corey playing shortstop today for Cedar City, and his first at bat popped out to the first baseman. On the year, 0 for 6 now, has scored a couple of runs. Pretty good lead for Maker over at first base. The pitch, that one's high, backdoor pick. Not in time, pretty close, but not in time. But that's now five straight balls at the hand of Blake Sweat. Not thinking too much stamina again. Threw 90 pitches last week against Provo. But ever since that last strikeout, has had a far time finding it. Working out of the stretch now. Takes a look. Delivers on the slide step. Misses high again. And that's going to bring Connor Johnson up out of his seat. And he wants to have a talk with his pitcher. Trip to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. They've really grown to love their Chevron family and appreciate your support. Stop on in to Mirror Lake Station in Camas, Utah. Wasatch 2-3 and three on the season. Losses coming at the hands of Ridgeline, Provo High School, and Juab High School. Wins over this Cedar City team that they played last week. And they also got a win over Uinta High School. They'll play Uinta High School this next Wednesday for the first home game. It'll be opening day at Wasatch High School. A couple quick updates for other sports happening around Wasatch High School. The softball team, rough start, 1-8, including an 0-2 start in region play. 
The lacrosse team, after losing two straight, bounced back and got a nice win over Northridge High School last night, 9-4. to four. And then the soccer team, defending state champs, continue to remain undefeated. They had a dominating 5-0 victory yesterday, 5-0 victory over Cedar Valley. The 2-0, that one's in the dirt for ball three. So seven straight balls now from Blake Sweat. Wasatch has no action going in the bullpen. And why would you? Blake's been good, but having a hard time locating it here. Takes a peek over at Maker at first base. Delivers the 3-0, and that one misses as well. So four straight balls now, or excuse me, eight straight back-to-back -back walks. And now Cedar City trying to threaten. Have runners in scoring position, have only been able to produce one hit so far. Four base runners, three of those coming at the hand of Walk. Coming in on the left-hand side of the box will be Lunt, who, uh, let's see, flew out to left field in his last at bat to Crew Baxter, the sophomore, who's playing out in left field. 192 batting average, but does have one, nine RBIs. That one's closer, misses just below the knees for another ball. Hafen trying to work hard there behind the dish for Wasatch. Your outfield today. Crew Baxter in left, Zach Burdett, the senior in center, and then junior Grant Mahoney in right. Sweat comes set. Bridger Shaw trying to keep him close at second base. Another ball, and that one's high. Moves the count to 2-0. Two outs was the story against Provo High School last week. What such so numerous times they able to get two outs and just couldn't close the door on Provo, and Provo was able to produce runs with two outs. So that comes set. Long look this time. Delivers. That one's in there for a strike. Went to the curveball and is able to get the called strike. Moves the count to 2-1. One. See if that helps him find it. Wasatch trying to get through this fourth inning, leading 4-0. Sweat comes set. Takes one look. Delivers on a slide step. That one's inside the box. Good job there from Hafen, who goes down to his knees, smothers it, and that moves the count to 3-1. Now a conversation happening with the two umpires. They may be checking how many outs, a count, something. There's a little communication. They're back at it, though. 3-1 the count. Blake with back-to-back -back walks, trying not to load the bases and trying to get out of the inning. 3-1 the count. Lunt on the left-hand side of the box. Blake gets the pitch. Delivers. That one's in there for a strike. Fills up the count at full. Runners will get a head start with a full count and two outs. But Blake's able to come back with strike two. Three to the count. Blake getting the pitch from Hafen. Likes it. Takes one look. Delivers the payoff. Strike three on the outside corner. And Blake Sweat gets the strikeout and retires the inning. No runs on no hits, no errors. And two are left on base as we move into the top of the fifth. Wasatch leading four to zero. Napa know-how. Your local Napa Auto Parts, Wasatch Auto Parts at 105 North Main Street in Heber City stocks auto parts, tools and equipment, and many other items for heavy-duty trucks, marine, and farming equipment. Stop in today at Wasatch Auto Parts, 105 North Main Street in Heber City, a proud sponsor of Wasatch Was Sports. Napa know-how. Hi, this is Kendall Crittenden, Wasatch County Council member and a member of the Caring Community Coalition. Did you know that kids are at a greater risk of experimenting with alcohol and drugs between the hours of 3 and 6 p.m.? Many parents are still at work this time of day. Check in with your kids. Find out where your kids will be, who they'll be with, and what they will be doing. Brought to you by Wasatch Behavioral Health and the Caring Community Coalition. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Top of the fifth action brought to you by Physical at the Fit Stop. Do you sometimes feel dizzy or unstable? If so, Physical at the Fit Stop has good news. Falls are preventable. Call Physical at 435-654-5607 for a free fall risk assessment. Let's see how you can improve your balance and regain your freedom. And... Zach Burdett's going to go ahead and take one right off the helmet to get things started here in the top of the fifth inning. So Wasatch has their leadoff guy on after a hit-by-pitch. 
That'll bring up Riker Evans. Riker Evans on the day. Walked in his first at bat and then singled on a line drive to the right fielder that brought in a run. Riker Evans continues to be, well, I think he's three for four on the year with runners in scoring position. Burdett now has reached base twice, struck out in his first at bat, but singled through the three four hole and then ended up scoring later on in that inning. Riker Evans, one for one with a single through the right center fielder. Gap had an RBI and walked. Evans is going to square here. Burdett will scamper back to the bag. Burdett is actually going to be taking out. Bo Jones will come in. Burdett might be getting loose in the bullpen. He or might be getting a little bit of relief action coming in for Blake Sweat. Evan squares. He's going to lay down the bun to the right side. Pitcher's going to field it cleanly. Throw it to first. Nice sacrifice bun there from Evans as he continues to execute in the box. And there's one away, but also a runner on second. Going to bring up Braxton Fowler. Fowler walked in his first at bat and then grounded out in his second at bat. Now two for five on the year. Got a hit in his last game in a pinch hit roll to the left side. Grounded out to the first baseman. He's going to swing at this one. It's a roll over to the third baseman. Third baseman fields it clean. Throws it back over across the diamond. Gets Fowler at first base. And they're able to keep Bo Jones at second base. Two away on the ground out to the third baseman. And that will bring up the sophomore, Crew Baxter. He's got two at bats and two walks in the game so far today. 4-0 the score. Baxter. In on the left-hand side of the box. I want to remind you to stick around for our fifth inning stretch brought to you by Guild Mortgage. That will be coming up after the top of the fifth. That pitch is in there low and inside for ball one. Baxter has not seen many strikes in the game today. Again, two walks. But has an RBI opportunity with the duck on the pond at second base. Nash on the mound in relief. Cedar City started Martin, and now they've brought in Nash in relief. Nash takes one look, high leg kick, delivers, swing and a miss for strike one. 1-1 one, one the count. We'll go back up to the top of the order after Baxter with Carter Bucad on deck. Nash takes a little second to get the pitch, now likes it, takes a second look at Jones at second base, delivers, that one misses outside. Four ball two, 2-1 two, the count. In relief, Nash has thrown an inning in two-thirds, has 30 pitches so far in the game today. Again, Burdett getting loose in the bullpen for Wasatch. Blake Sweat's been mowing, but it looked like maybe something maybe tweaked in that last inning. Foul ball there, moves the count to 2-2. Two -two. Two count, two away. Baxter in the box on the left hand side. Nash is going to step off the back and reset. Two walks on the day for Baxter. Jones, good speed at second base. Hit through the infield. Should be able to produce a run. Two two to count. The pitch swung on and missed. Strike three. That's going to be Nash's second strikeout of the game, and Wasatch is retired. No runs on, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. As we move into the top of the fifth inning, or excuse me, the bottom of the fifth inning. Now your fifth inning stretch is brought to you by Physical at the Fifth Stop. Excuse me, your 15 years brought to you by Guild Mortgage. Tom Stone and Guild Mortgage has loan options to fit every situation, from down payment assistance programs for first-time home buyers to government-sponsored programs for military families and rural residents, or jumbo loans in high-cost markets. Go Guild Mortgage has it all. It's time for your Gordon Law Group game summary as we take a look at the summary so far, Wasatch able to produce one run in the second inning, two runs in the third inning, four runs in the fourth, and then just put up a goose egg there in the fifth. But Blake Sweat's been good. He's back on the mound here for the bottom of the fifth. He's been good all game long. He's pitched a scoreless in, scoreless, and has eight strikeouts so far in the game today. 
five of those coming looking. So Blake's been very good. That group, again, that game summary brought to you by the Glen Law Group, your full service local law firm practicing in all areas of the law. They take pride in saying, yeah, we do that. Going back to our keys to the game, they're brought to you by Tyler Moss, but uh, Doris Dental. Are your sponsors of your keys to the game? They offer no surprises of dental treatment with Dr. Doris and Dr. Proctor. Let Doris Dental make your mouth smile. Learn more at DoriusDental.com. Keys where to play clean. Wasatch has done that so far today. No errors in the game for Wasatch. Now it helps when you've got eight Ks of your 12 outs have come at the hand of Blake Sweat and the strikeouts. Players that are standout performers so far today. Bank of Utah has accounts for everyone from personal and business checking and savings accounts to mortgage and consumer loans. Visit our friendly Heber Brand. 620 West 100 South, and together we'll build relationships that last. Bank of Utah is an equal housing lender. Member FDIC. Blake Sweat, four innings pitched. He's going to be your stout down performer. He's only given up one hit, three walks, eight Ks, no runs on the mound for the junior Blake Sweat. He's going to get the bottom of the fifth action going with a foul ball. Moves the count to 0 1. And lastly, a good spa day is your favorite hometown place to relax and unwind. They offer massage, skin care, nail care, and unique relaxing spa packages. Pick a good spa day to be your spa. And let's just stick with the junior Blake Sweat. The solo home run back in the third inning that gave Wasatch the 2 0 lead is your a good spa day play of the game so far. Let's move into the bottom of the fifth action. 1-1 one, one the count for the Cedar City hitter. That is going to be Burgess. He struck out in his first at bat. He's now 1 for 6 on the year. One. This is going to be elevated to left field. Crew Baxter has a long ways to run. He's not going to get to it, but it will land in foul territory. 2-2 two, two. now the count to Burgess. And make that strikeout number nine. Completely fools Burgess. And Wasatch has their first out here in the bottom of the fifth. Going to bring up the number nine hitter, Leader, who struck out looking in his first at bat, but comes in hitting over 360 on the year. Four RBIs as well for the number nine senior. Number nine hitter, who is a senior. Back into the windup is Sweat. Seems to have found it again. That one's going to miss low for ball one. 61 in, 61 pitches now for Blake Sweat. Again, went 90 pitches last week against Provo. And Blake is going to trip on the mound, and that will make it 2-0. When you're not able to deliver, that's going to make count 2-0. Just got his spike caught on that turf. And again, that's the second time. We saw Mattinson had some trouble with that mound in game one. It's a mound that is dirt, but does have a turf landing there for the pitcher. 2-0. That one's going to bounce in front of the bag. So that makes the count now 3-0 for leader. No defensive changes so far for Wasatch. We did see Zach Burdett get a little bit of time out in the bullpen in between innings. Looks to be the relief pitcher today for Wasatch. That one's inside, but too far inside, and that's going to be a walk. So over the last couple of batters, Wasatch now up to five walks. That's three walks in the last two innings for Blake Sweat. And that brings us to the top of the order. Giles, who popped out to the first baseman and walked in his last at bat. Giles on the year, a junior, 270 batting average coming into the game today. So that working out of the stretch now with the runner on first. He's been good working out of the stretch. Comes set, takes one look, delivers with a slide step, gets the inside corner on the off-speed pitch for strike one. Taking a long time to get the signs down at first base. Cedar City, a little bit of a sense of urgency. Down to their final eight outs, trying to get back in this thing. Runner's going to go. It's an off-speed pitch. Hathen delivers a strike to second base. It bounces right in front of the bag. Wasatch can't handle it. Wasatch a little bit late getting over to the bag, but it's going to be a stolen base on the ball. So it's a 1-1 count. And Leader is able to steal second and gets a runner in scoring position for Cedar City. Cedar City's only had two. It had 
two runners in scoring position. Leader will now be the third runner. So they haven't threatened a lot in the game today. Blake's done a great job. Trying to get through the fifth. One away already. Goes back to the off speed and lands it again. That's the second time he's been able to land that pitch. for a strike. Moves the count to one, two. Boy, you're on deck. He struck out twice already to Blake Sweat today. Blake taking his time. Gets the pitch he likes. Not a big lead from leader at second base, but does have good speed. The one, two. Goes back to the fastball and gets him looking. Kind of pitching backwards right now in his sequence. Lands a couple of curveballs for strikes and then goes with the fastball for strike three. Make it double-digit strikeouts for Blake Sweat. Ten strikeouts on the day for the junior. That will bring us to the left-handed Boyer. Came in hitting over 300, but back-to-back -back Ks in his first two at-bats against Sweat. Steps in on the left-hand side against Cedar City with a runner on second base. Bridges Shaw holding him on with the lefty up. Swing and a miss for strike one to get this at-bat started. Baller playing even with the bag at third base. Giving up that third base line. Riker Evans also playing off the line at first base. Bukad playing deep at second. And then Shaw trying to hold the runner on at second. The runner on base is leader. Sweat up 0-1 comes set. Leg kick, delivers again, and another swing and a miss for strike two. Blake Sweat continuing to look good on the mound. And now has an 0-2 count with two away. Wasatch has done a far better job this week with Sweat on the mound of finishing the job with two outs. Let's see if they can get out of another jam. Cedar City left two runners on base last inning, trying to get this run in, their first run in. It's been a shutout game so far for Sweat. The 0-2, the pitch, goes back to the fastball, misses inside for ball one. 1-2, one, now the count. Pitch number 71 there for Blake. Has been very efficient through four and two-thirds innings. He's gone three straight fastballs here to Boyer. Boyer was behind both of the previous two fastballs. Sweat tried to go a little bit harder on that last one. Trying to get three strikeouts in the inning. The pitch. Goes to the off-speed. Great job from Hafen. Smothers that one that's in the dirt. Doesn't get Boyer to chase, and it's going to be 2-2. Two -two. So two balls, two strikes, two outs. It's deuces here in the bottom of the fifth. Sweat back into the stretch. Hafen handing down some signs. Boyer says let's take a timeout. Boyer adjusting the batting gloves, gets back into the box with a 2-2 count with two away. Sweat comes set. One long look, delivers, misses it, and this one's going to get away from Hafen. Runner's going to advance to third base. Sweat will come and cover up home, and now we'll have a full count, two outs, and a runner on third base. So Wasatch continues to try to close this thing out. Good at bat from Boyer after falling down 0-2. Has looked at a couple of close ones with a good eye and has now earned a full count. Sweat will go back into the windup with the runner just on third base. The windup, the lay kick, the pitch. It's going to be a ground ball to the 3-4 hole. Bukad comes, can't come up with it. Ball gets through the infield and Cedar City has their first run on the board on the seeing eye single and the RBI from Boyer. And that makes the score now 4-1. to one. So runner on first base. And Cedar City cuts the once four run lead down to one. 4-1 to one the score. Bottom of the fifth, two away. It's, took, it's taken Cedar City five innings just to get that one run across. We are working on time limit on these games today, so we'll keep a look at the time as well. Five to one, excuse me, four to one the score. Nice pitch in there for a strike. It is going to be to the number three hitter, Nash. Nash on the mound right now, trying to help himself out. He came in in relief. Martin was your starter. Good lead over at first base. Runner's going to go. Pitches inside. Hafen from the knees. Not in time, as that's going to be the second stolen base of the inning. For Cedar City, and once again, they have a runner in scoring position with two away. Over 
half the runs Blake Sweat has given up have come with two outs this season. Now the run comes in with two outs here against Cedar City. Wasatch playing normal depth in the outfield, maybe a little bit shallow out and left. Hafen again taking his time, giving the signs, and that's going to cause Nash to step out of the box. Nash had a rough start of the year in the box, only a 179 hitter. He's got a strikeout and a ground out at the shortstop today. The pitch. That one's going to be swung on, and that's another base knock to the right side. Mahoney's not going to get to it. Runner, it's going to get by Mahoney. Runner's going to go ahead and come in and score. Mahoney's able to recover and keep Nash at first base by the back-to-back two-out singles, and they've cut this lead in half from four down to two. It's a four-to-two lead, and that's going to bring Coach Jacobson out of the dugout and trot to the mound. Trip to the mound brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. We're going to go ahead and take a break. We'll see what Coach Jacobson decides to do. Wasatch holding on to a 4-2 lead. Attention painters and homeowners. Premium Kelly Moore paint is now available at your neighborhood Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. That's right. Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the official authorized Kelly Moore paints outlet. You can now get premium Kelly Moore paints at your Heber Wasatch Back Paint and Floor. You'll love their high quality, long lasting finishes for any home paint project. So if you're painting a single room, refreshing your front door, or doing a full repaint of your home, Wasatch Back Paint and Floor is the place to go for fine Kelly Moore paints. Stop by today. Well, folks, spring is near, but have no fear. Country Gardens and Nursery is here for your everyday garden supplies, decor, and more. From our personal gardener to our new bulk yard, where we offer large variety of soil, mulches, and decorative rock. Come see what we have in store. Country Gardens and Nursery, 1401 South, US 189. We'll see you soon and hope to put you in bloom. A UCCU Home Equity line of credit puts your home's equity to work for you. Finish your basement or yard and raise your home's value. Pay off higher interest, help with college or weddings. It's peace of mind knowing that you have a low-rate line of credit ready for whatever, whenever. UCCU will also provide you with a Home Equity Visa card, giving you instant access to your equity. Learn more or start your application today at uccu.com or stop by any branch. UCCU. Love where you bank. Big O Tires in Heber is your one-stop shop for tires and service. What was once Point S is now Big O Tires. Same service, but different name. We're locally owned and operated and want to help you get your vehicle ready to road trip this summer. Stop in for all your name brand tires, oil changes, alignments, brakes, batteries, shocks, struts, and a whole lot more. Plus, Big O Tires offers financing options to fit any budget or any situation. Visit us today. Big O Tires, the team you trust. Five, four, three, two, one. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Zach Burdett will be on the mound for Wasatch, making his first appearance this weekend. Had a good outing last week on the mound. Two and a two-thirds innings pitch. Didn't give up a run and a 64% strike percentage for Zach Burdett. Pitching change brought to you by Mirror Lake Station. Best donuts in Utah. Mirror Lake Station is your stop for gas, groceries, and goodies. Another stolen base for Cedar City on the ball one. So once again, another runner in scoring position. It's been back-to-back singles for Cedar City, producing two runs, making the score four to two, and making this one interesting in the bottom of the fifth. Wasatch still leading by two. Burdett gets the sign, delivers on the slide step, tries to go back to the off speed, can't land the off speed again, and that moves the count to 2-0. Batter in the box is Bunnell. Back-to-back K's so far in the game today. Burdett delivers on another slide step. This one's going to be elevated to the right side. Evans has a chance. It's going towards the fence. And does he make the play? No, it hits the glove, and he can't pull it in. Tough play as Evans was right up next to the fence. He bobbled a little bit, or he stumbled as he went from grass to dirt and wasn't able to regain it. And Bunnell, fortunate to stay alive, and that's going to move the count to 2-1. Bunnell back in the box on the right-hand side. Burdett able to come back with a strike after back-to-back balls to get the inning or his at-bat started. 2-1 to count. Another slide step delivery. Goes with the off-speed once again. It's at the feet of Hafen as he misses low and away for ball three. One of the reasons that made Burdett so effective last week was able to throw multiple pitches for strikes. So far, not been able to land the off-speed. 
And that moves the count to 3-1. The 3-1 comes back. Foul ball is Bunnell a little bit ahead of the fastball. Fouls it off, and that's going to fill up the count at full. 3-2 the count. Wasatch trying to minimize and stop the bleeding. They've given up two, still have a two-run lead. Bunnell back into the box. Burdett taking his time. Full count. The payoff. Swung on, elevated once again. This one's going to for sure go foul behind the dugout. And will once again stay put at full count. Good battle here from Burdett after falling behind 3-1 to Bunnell. Wasatch playing shallow out in the outfield. Infield playing normal depth. Faller playing about even with the bag at third base. Evans giving up a little bit of space over there at first. Both players giving up the lines. Burdett taking his time. Gets the sign. Comes set. Not a big lead at second base. The payoff again. That one in into the dirt. Runner's going to go to third. And another stolen base. The Cedar City is running all around right now. As they steal another base and a walk. And they've now got runners on the corners. And just like that, the tying run is at first base for Cedar City. That'll bring us to Mackert, the best hitter for Cedar City. He's only a sophomore, but he's hitting 467, three RBIs, has a double in this game already, and walked on four pitches in his last at bat. Watch that again, just trying to get the third and final out. All the damage in this inning has come after Wasatch was able to get two Ks. It was a strikeout, a walk, and a strikeout, and since then, Cedar City has been able to do some damage and produce two runs. 4-2. Pitch is in there. Gets away from Hafen. Runner's going to go to second base. Throw is off the mark. Runner should have gone home. Did not go. So it's ball one, but the runner does go in. And yet another stolen base. A little bit like Hafen's having a little bit of a hard time locating the pitches coming in. That one wasn't that bad of a pitch, but it was he wasn't able to handle it. And that's what allowed the slower base runner to advance. So now the tying run at second base. Off speed, or excuse me, fastball misses, and that's going to be now two balls, no strikes. To Macker. Have a base open. Corey on deck has a pop out to the first baseman and a walk. The 2 0 goes with the off speed, doesn't get him to chase. 3 0 now to count. Did a great job of shutting things down last week in his appearance on the mound. Having a little bit harder time so far here today. 2-1 to count, two away. Macker steps out of the box and will reset. Again, this fifth inning action brought to you by Guild Mortgage. Stop on in to get some advice and all your mortgage needs. This one's going to be a ground or a line drive over the second baseman's head, and we got ourselves a tie ball game. Mackert's going to have his second double of the year, as this one's going to get all the way to the right center field wall. Both runs come in to score, and we've got ourselves a four to four game as Cedar City has scored four runs with two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. Good piece of hitting from Mackard. He's hit that right center field gap twice now. And now he has two doubles and make it two RBIs as well. And that's going to bring up Corey. 0 for 6 on the year. Still looking for his first base hit. But he's got an RBI opportunity and a chance to give Cedar City a rare lead. Only 2 and 10 on the year are the Reds. But that comes set. Takes a look. Delivers. That one bounces in front of the plate again for ball one. Wasatch will have to do some offensive damage when they come up to the plate. You also got to be looking at time here a little bit. 12.47 left to go. Should at least get one more inning in. This one's going to be elevated. Is it going to stay in play? No, it's going to go foul. It will be strike one. So 1-1 one, one to count here to Corey. Nash for Cedar City has done a good job of stopping the bleeding in relief. Burdett trying to do the same here. But it's been three straight hits, single, single, double, for Cedar City to tie this thing up. The 1-1 goes with the off speed, doesn't get him to chase, and that's going to make the count 2-1. Deck 
gets the pitch, comes set. One look, fly step, delivers, foul ball for strike two. 2-2, two -two, now the count. Sending brought to you in part by Gravity Coalition, who offers the best in bikes, skis, snowboards, skateboards, and more in the Heber Valley. Personalized service, sales, and repair for the gear you love. Gravity Coalition in Midway, Utah, or gravitycoalition.com. This is a cool shop. The 2-2 two -two is going to go right back to Burdett. Burdett can't handle it. It's going to go quickly to Bukad. Bukad's not going to get it in time as well. And yet another base knock. We're going to give that a single as it was a hard hit right back to Burdett. Burdett was able to slow it down. Bukad can't get it in time over to first base. And another hit. No runs come in. And it's going to be runners on first and third. So the leading run now moves to third base. And that's going to bring up the lefty. Lunt. Lunt popped out to the left fielder and struck out looking. Cedar City's been running at will in the game so far in this inning. Already four stolen bases in this inning alone. All with two outs. Blake got, the first, got two outs with two strikeouts, then had to come out of the game. Wasatch has not been able to produce out since. Gets the nice pitch on the outside corner for strike one. No balls, one strike. Goes back to the off speed. That one misses outside for ball one. One one the count. Again, two away. Runners not going. That leading runs at third base. After scoring four runs in the inning, it's now a 4 4 game. Burdett comes sweat. Big lead. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. No, sorry. Runner faked went. Swing and a miss. Four strike two. One two. Now the count. Burdett after. Behind a little bit has been able to come back and has looked good so far, but has just given up hits. The one two misses low and outside. Hafen can't handle the pitch and it's going to advance the runner to second base. That one was not that bad of a ball. Hafen just couldn't get it in his glove and that's going to move the runner to second base. And Wasatch now, excuse me, Cedar City now with runners on second and third. Two two the count, two outs. Burdett sets the pitch. Swung on, elevated high. This one's going to get out of play as well. It's going to land right here in front of us. And that moves the count to 2-2, two, two, or it keeps the count at 2-2. Two, two. Two, two the count as we reset it to. Keeps it at, deuce, keeps it at deuces. Wasatch continues to try to stop the bleeding. The pitch. This one's elevated to shallow center field. Bridger Shaw comes up, makes the play, and Wasatch finally gets out of the inning. But it's not before the damage is done. As Wasatch gives up four runs in the inning. Four runs on four hits, no errors. And we've got ourselves a good one going into the top of the six. Four to four, the score. We'll be back before the top of the six. Hey there, Heber City. Are you tired of dings, dents, and scrapes ruining the beauty of your beloved vehicle? Look no further than Robarge Collision, the ultimate destination for all your auto body needs. At Robarge Collision, they've been offering top-notch collision repairs and outstanding customer service. Their team of expert technicians is passionate about bringing your car back to its original glory, no matter the size of damage. Their state-of-the-art facility is equipped with cutting-edge technology, ensuring precise and accurate repairs. They handle it all with precision and care. Melissa here again with ARC. Have you heard we are a locally owned and operated company? We have created new affordable housing solutions for the Valley as well as creating amazing custom spaces out of repurposed shipping containers. We build mobile offices, commercial spaces, pools, spas. The possibilities are endless when you choose ARC. Get $1,000 off any office purchase until the end of February. We are located at 375 West, 910 South in Heber. Check out our website at spacesbyark.com. Top of the six, brought to you by Wasatch Physical Therapy and Sports Medicine, your rehabilitation specialist dedicated to your total recovery from all injuries. Let Dan Ivey and his team get you back to 100%. Wasatch had the 4-0 lead but gave up a four spot in the bottom of the fifth, and now it's tied 4-4. Wasatch with the top of the order up, Carter Bukad, Blake Sweat, Grant Mahoney. Bukad takes the first pitch, swings at the second one, elevates it to right field. Right fielder will settle underneath it. 
and make the first grab, first out of the inning. He's going to bring up the number two hitter, Blake Sweat, was your starter, had the lead before leaving. And part of that lead was due to a solo home run that he had in his second at bat. He's currently two for three, but has reached all three times due to an error in his last at bat. That one's going to be a ball up in the zone for ball one. 1-0 one the count. Home run he hit was over the left field wall. Kind of a line drive home run. Wasatch trying to help themselves out. That's going to be ball two. 2-0 two the count. Nash in relief. Actually, he leads the team in innings pitched. Came into today's game with 11 and a third innings pitched. 17 strikeouts and a 2.47 ERA, which is best on the team. Make it 3-0 here to Blake Sweat after three straight balls. Wasatch trying to get a base runner on and try to regain this lead. 3-0 the count. The pitch, that one's going to miss as well. Four straight balls. They did not want to give Blake Sweat a pitch. It looked like there. And Wasatch has a base runner on, which represents... The leading run, and that's going to bring up Grant Mahoney. Mahoney on the day, filler's choice, ground out, ground out, and then reached on an error by the third baseman. Quick update from Arch Madness. Northwestern is able to get the victory over FAU in overtime. Baylor is able to hold on and win that one against Colgate easily. San Diego State has a seven-point lead at the half, and Western Kentucky also with a seven-point lead over Marquette at the half. Kind of a surprising one there, 15-2 matchup. Marquette struggled last year in this tournament. Pickoff move, not in time. 0-1 to count here to Grant Mahoney. This might be the last inning due to time limit, so Wasatch needing to push a run across. Swung on, elevated to right center field. It's deep to right center field. Long run for both the right fielder, center fielder, but right fielder combos over, makes the grab, and Wasatch has two away. That ball was deep to right center field. Good play from leader. And now a two away, Wasatch with a runner on first will bring up the number four hitter, Bridger Shaw. Strikeouts to start the game, but then had a filler's choice ground out that brought in a run in his last at bat. Takes ball one, 1-0 one -oh the count. Nash comes set, delivers out of the stretch. It's swung on. It's going to be a ground ball to the second baseman. Second baseman fields it clean, throws it across the diamond in time. And Wasatch is retired. It's 4-4 four to four as we go into the bottom of the sixth. Unlock your potential at Bonnie Joseph Academy here in Heber. Explore the art of barbering, basic aesthetic, cosmetology, master aesthetic, and nail technician programs. Visit bonniejosephacademy.edu to enroll today. Financial aid is available for qualifying students, and we offer flexible distant education options. Transform your passion into a rewarding career with Bonnie Joseph Academy, where beauty meets expertise. Chad here from Mountain Ridge Trailers. Celebrating 20 years in business, we know you value strength and reliability. Whether it's for work or play, our dump and equipment trailers are built to last. Enclosed cargo trailers for business and fun, or open utility trailers for everything in between. With expert sales, parts, and service, we've got you covered. Mountain West Trailers is always right behind you. Visit us at mountainwesttrailer.com or stop by at 1470 South Highway 40 here in Heber. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. KTMP Heber City and live sports coverage with Ty and Ty. Welcome back. Top of the seventh action brought to you by Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress. When you are down to your final out and your fridge goes out, turn your drop the ball into a touch the mall at Heber Appliance. Increase your at-home satisfaction with Heber Appliance Furniture and Mattress. Well, we're into the bottom of the sixth. Wasatch had a 4-0 lead, gave up a four spot in the fifth. And now we find ourselves tied at 4-4, four to four, and Wasatch trying to hold on to this one. Zach Burdett still on the mound after coming in in relief last inning. Wasatch with it looks like a little bit of some troubles with maybe the, the catcher's gear. Hafen a little bit slate coming out of the 
coming out of the dugout. He now looks ready to go. Now in high school, they're allowed to use what they call IFBs. And so you can put an uh, earpiece in your ear, and instead of having to signal in pitches, a coach with a walkie-talkie can just call in the pitches from the dugout. And that might have been the struggle there. We're ready to get started for Cedar City. They're going to bring up to the plate Burgess leader and then up to the top of the order. Top of the order has been good for Cedar City. Pretty important for Wasatch to get these first couple guys out and not get into that part of the lineup. This could be the last inning if Cedar City is able to push a run across. The score is 4-4, four four, and it'll be Burgess. Pitch misses high for ball one. Excuse me, I think we do have a pinch hitter here. It's going to be Ludlow who is going to come in to, pit, to hit here in the number eight spot. This one's going to be swung on, elevated to left field. Baxter goes to his left, goes, excuse me, goes to his right, makes the grab, and Wasatch has one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Nice play there from Baxter. It's going to bring up number two, Leader. Leader, the number nine hitter today, Walk, Walk. Excuse me, that was Baxter. That switching the paper around in his first two at bats. Struck out looking and then walked in his last at bat. That walk ended up producing a run later on in the inning. Foul ball for strike one. First pitch. Here again, Burdett on the mound. Blake Sweat moved out to center field. Off speed pitch misses up for ball one. One one the count. Lead off batter Giles on deck for Cedar City. One one, that one's in there for a strike. Moves the count to one two. One two to count, one away here in the bottom of the sixth. The pitch back to the off speed. It's a rollover. Faller fills it on the backhand, gets rid of it quick. Nice play.